Hey guys, welcome back to this fourth lesson on understanding the cage system. And what I want to do in this lesson is just dig a little bit deeper from the last uh, video that you saw on the whole sequence of the cage. And if you watch that and your mind started thinking through some things about the guitar and how the frets work, you might have gotten an aha that kind of made you think, whoa, this is pretty crazy stuff here and some things might start to be uh, making sense on the fingerboard and how everything is related. Uh, just in case it's not, I wanted to kind of give more examples to help some of those ahas to appear for you. So what I'm going to do is give you an example of, of uh, how the cage uh, system works within musical context through the applications of it. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to write down a two chord progression. So two chord progression between A and D. Just the chords A and D. And I'm going to show you here. So on this first one, go back, this will be the A chord. This here will be the D chord. Now from the two open positions, now the easiest way to learn this is to always go back to the open positions. So here's the A chord down here. A looks like that. The D chord, simple one, you know how to do this. So when you play A and D, it would be A and D. What I'm going to do now though is I'm going to show you how this caged works throughout the whole neck between this A and D progression. And the easiest way to show you in the beginning is pretend like we're using a capo. Okay, so I'm going to draw a capo and then I will show you what happens. So this is the open position. If I were to go up to the next position, open. Let's say I were to go up to the next position. What I would do is I would capo on to here and here. Now if you think through, what would be the next form up from the A? What would be over here? Well, remember, you just look at the sequence. A, the next one is G. So the form is going to be a G form up here, which would look like this. And then here, after the D form, what would be here? After the D, you remember this continues, it's cage, de cage, de cage, de. So after the D, it would go back to C. So the form here would be a C form like that. Now just so that this is clear, I'm going to erase some of these other parts so you can see this clearly. Nah. Okay, so here now you would have what we can call second position. Position. Now this is still an A and a D chord progression, but now the forms you're using is a G and a C position. Well, let's go up one more. If I were to go and go to the next position, we'll look where these notes leave off. I would put a capo there. So we're capoing now on the fifth fret. Once again, here's the G position. What would be, in the sequence of cage, what would be the form that would be right over here? G, E. That's right. It's the E form. It's E form. This is the C. What would be the form here? I'll let you guess. Look up here. If you said A, you're correct. So now you got the A form. 
Now this is the third position. I'm going to go and erase all this. The whole thing, it, 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 you would see positions broken down all throughout, but just because it gets kind of messy this way, I'm going to erase these notes. So you can see clearly. So now here, you're playing an E form. Here you're playing an A form, but the chords you're playing with the, this capo on the fifth fret is A and D. It would be the same progression. Okay, let's keep going. So after this position, we would draw capo here, because this is where the notes leave off. Capo here, as you can see, the notes leave off right there. Okay, I'm not even going to show you this. I want you to just guess. After the E position, what would be the form on this side? If you guess the D, that's correct. So we got the D position here. How about after the A here, what would be the form? If you said G, you're correct. So now, these two forms here, this is makes up the fourth position. Actually, I need to erase this part, and you'll see why, because there's one kind of unique issue with these that uh, messes kind of things up, so they're not perfectly neat. But now, yeah, you got a D chord, or D form, and a G form, but you're actually playing A and D because you're playing up on the neck. Okay, now here is the last position. By the way, there's only five. Remember, there's only five forms. There's only five sequences. And basically, your, your guitar, the neck is broken down into five positions. If you have any experience with the pentatonic scale, there's five positions. And that's all related to this whole cage system and why that, that five, you know, is seems to be the amount of positions there are. So let me go and draw the next one. Now for this last position, remember I told this video, everything breaks down neatly except for between the positions D and C. So we're in D and the next sequence here, the form would be a C. Normally up till now, you've been basically bowing on the very last note, like it would be here. But between the C or the D and the C position, you would actually break, you would actually have to capo one fret lower than this high note here. You would have to fret here. So if you're gonna fret here, then you have to fret in the same spot here, which kind of makes it messy. Okay, let me get my eraser, erase these other notes to keep it kind of um, there. Okay, so in this last and fifth position, the note would be, because you're at a D, would be a C. The form is a C. So there's the form. Now the next form here, you used a G, so the next form would be an E, but watch. You can't just put an E from this capo like that. That would not be right because these two aren't linked appropriately. Because between a G and an E, the capo should actually be right here. So what you have to do in this situation and only where you remember this whole D and C form line up, since you can't move the capo for each chord, what you would have to do is because you already have these two notes here, you would have to play this as a bar chord. So you would have to put your fingers here, and then you would have to play this E form 
like that. And that is why when you're in the key of C, you have to play this bar chord of, you know, you played an F, but you have to play that bar chord, which is difficult. That was the exact same reason between um, when you're in this position where the C is the, you know, home chord or the one chord. Um, for the four chord or the D chord, you have to play a bar. So that's the only place where it kind of gets messy, but otherwise everything else kind of stacks up real nicely. I hope by watching some of this, you're starting to get like these incredible ahas and you're going, wait a minute. You know, I, I, I could see something happening here. And if it does, you're, you're starting to understand the complexity of this cage system. And by far the most um, eye-opening system on the guitar that I've learned and I think you will too. If you just spend time going over and seeing how it applies to everything. By the way, this is fifth position. Okay.